faith in the Son, faith in the Holy Ghost. These three are mine. No wonder without revelation you make him three gods. These three are one. That's what the Bible said. And if this God is in you, brother, sister, what, what is your problem? Brother Bram said, I hope God reveals it to you. And I believe the revelation is coming down. Let's appreciate the Holy Spirit. Brother, we don't know what the Holy Spirit is. I don't. We believe it. God himself in simple vessels. My. God bless you richly. We thank God for all that has already gone on from Sunday school, the children, the different classes, all the teachers. I want us to appreciate the Sunday school teachers. You know, behind the scenes, oh, we really appreciate them. All the teachers of Sunday school, God bless you. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he grows, he will not depart from it. He can depart from the truth, but the truth will not depart from him. The truth will set you free. It will bring them back. A quick announcement. Our next water baptism is being arranged. Uh, we have baptism candidates. You are aware we've been having baptism classes for those who want to be baptized or re-baptized uh, by the grace of God Saturday the 15th of December we would have the next baptism uh, it will be in the usual place in a uh, Dalich I believe it's Dalich so if we will repeat the announcement because it's a Saturday we know it's not very convenient but we've done it before as many as can be there to support that will be a blessing. So please put that in your diary. 15th of December, Saturday, we would have the next baptism. We will also announce the time uh, closer to the time. The baptism candidates that we have so far, we have Sister Dorothy Mensa and her children, uh, Andrew Sajay, is it Ponla? Paula. Thank you, Paula Ajay, also Sister Nora Emedemi, Brother Emmanuel Van der Poy, Sister Kembele, Sister Felicia, and Brother Winston. If you are here, we, you want to baptize or re-baptize, please speak to the deacons. There is still time, and on the 15th of December, it will be done by the grace of God. Also, next Sunday is the Lord's Supper service for December. So the day before, which is Saturday, we will have the monthly youth session. Brother Carl will communicate the details with the group. But please take notes. It usually starts from 6 o'clock to about 9.30. So we would have that next Sunday, God willing. Oh, God is good. Sister, God is good. Now, don't, don't shy away from telling somebody that God is good. Amen. Amen. God is good. God is good. I just don't know how to say it. God is too good. God is too good. There is a, a membership update that I would like to give at this time. So we know what membership of the church means. Uh, Brother Bram said those who support the place with their presence, they pay their offering and they pay their tithes. That is a member of a local body. So when we want to be part of a, a local body, you declare and it's announced because we have responsibilities both ways. You be there for the church to support the cause and the church is there for you in every way. So membership is very, very important as Brother Abraham taught us. Now we receive an email from our precious sister Jillian. Uh, she sent this email to Pastor and myself last week concerning membership. 
Uh, she said um, she's been considering this for some time, but she feels strongly that Brother Joseph Braham's ministry will prepare her better for the rapture. Uh, so she wants to inform us officially that she has left OBC as a member uh, because, as I said, she believes in Brother Joseph Braham's ministry will prepare her better for the rapture. So we have responded. Uh, her email was very, uh, how do I put it? It was very open-hearted and well-spirited. Uh, she said to let you know as a church that she has no ought against anyone. She truly loves us, loves everyone. And uh, we should be in touch. We should pray for her. She's praying for us. No hard feelings concerning anyone, but purely on the basis of her faith in Brother Joseph Brown's ministry, she has left OBC officially. So we did acknowledge, uh, thank her for the, the, the good-spirited manner in which she wrote an email. And of course, it's our duty to announce that to the church. We did assure her we would do just that. So that is the membership update on that. Uh, it would be good to you know, give her a ring and say, praying for us. We're praying for you to uh, there is one rapture and I want I want my brother to make it. I believe he wants me to make it. But Abraham said together we will make it by the grace of God. It, it will be the grace of God. It will just be the grace of God. So we truly love Sister Gillian and the family and I believe we would uh, keep in touch with them as Christians always do. Amen. God is good. I have some testimonies here from God's children. And uh, the things God do, it's, it's, there's a testimony here from the Obri family. Say, adding another year to our husband and father's life on the 22nd of November, we pray that the Lord gives him strength and wisdom. Also, for the Lord to keep him in good health until the rapture morning. The family says, please read Psalm 103 verses 1 to 6 for us. Psalm 103, if you can please project that for us very quickly. Uh, we will do that for the brief family at their request. Psalm 103, very familiar scripture there. Are you able to project that for us? Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his church. We, we have benefits to draw from. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Brother Brown measured on this scripture. He said, no doctor, no hospital, never has ever healed. God alone is the healer. Who redeemed thy life from destruction. Who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfied thy mouth with good things. So that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Last one says. The Lord executed righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. Amen. Oh brother Obri, happy birthday. Hallelujah. There is one more birthday that I would like us to add and we'll sing a song for them. Uh, this is for Brother Andrews Ajay. Brother Andrew, young Andrew, stand to your feet. Let's, God bless you. So that is one of Sister Dorothy's children. Sister Dorothy's son, Andrew. Praise the Lord, Psalm 100 verse 4. Enter into his gate with thanksgiving and into his court with praise. Give thanks to him and praise him. Young Andrew say, I want to thank God Almighty because I became a year older on 22nd of November and because he gave me my life. 
Oh, isn't that wonderful? Oh, who gave you your life? It is he. I will always worship him. May his holy name be praised. And he wants to be baptized. Oh, he gave him his life. Oh, Brother Jesse, help us. Happy birthday. Brother Andrew, happy birthday. Please shake the young man's hand for us. And Brother Bree, Sister Janet, give your husband a hearty blessing for us. Thanksgiving here from Sister Rebecca Tego. It says, I want to thank the Lord God Almighty for Pastor Archie for bringing such deep and powerful sermons. I was thinking about the sermon preached on Friday prayer meeting at work early this morning, saying to myself, David encouraged the Israelite not to be afraid of the arm of Goliath, the arm of flesh of Goliath with all his armored metal dress, for the battle is the Lord's. He says, you cannot get gold on surface ground. I like that. Unless you dig deep and deeper. May God, so sister, sister Becky is basically appreciating our pastor. So may God give you strength to dig deep deep and deeper for the golden marbles for the wrapped for the bride of Christ may your labors in the Lord never be in vain may God help me to accept the finished work of the cross on the cross and not to look to the arm of flesh she says I salute you Pastor Archie and may God bless you amen oh that's encouraging that is encouraging amen if you were here on Friday, church, we are going places by the grace of God. You know you can switch. Hmm. But the brother said, did you know that inside of you lives another man? Stay on that. That's our gospel. Amen. Wonderful. Oh, more testimonies. This testimony is from our precious brother, Abraham Kaba. Amen. Amen. But Abraham, where are you? God bless you, my brother. Oh, church, God is good. God is good. The pain brother Abraham went through, only he knows. But when God does something, listen to the brother's own testimony. He said, I'm thanking God for his healing grace over my life. I was ill because God is a healer. Oh, what's wrong with me? Where is God? You are in the flesh. See, that's why you should give your children good names from the Bible. The brother is called Abraham. He said, I was ill because my God is the healer. Yeah. There's got to be something for God to come on the scene. I love that. And he's already made a way for my healing. He says, thank you saints for your prayers and support. May, the, may God Bless you all. Oh, Sister Tariro, God is good. Oh, Brother Abraham, to God we give the glory. God is a healer. He is the healer. There's only one healer indeed. There's a thanksgiving and testimony here from our precious brother Alex in Medemi. It says, please read Psalm 34. If we can please do that very quickly. Very much on our brother's heart. Psalm 34 verse 1 from verse 1. I will bless the Lord 
at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. Oh my. Verse 7. The angel of the Lord encamped round about them that fear him and delivered them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. See, that's what I've been saying. I'm quoting scripture. The Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no one to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Finally, verse 7, Come, ye children, hearken unto me, I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Amen. Oh, God, Lord, God, you are good. So Brother Alex says, please join me in thanking the Lord for his grace and mercies upon me and my family for he has provided me with a job after so many battles. So many battles. The Lord is on time. Oh, thank you Lord. God is on time. I would also like to thank my pastor, Brother Archie and the ministry for your prayers and your support both financially and spiritually. I also want to thank my precious wife, Sister Christina, for all your support, your prayers, and he says here, your patience. Sister, be patient. My, that is wonderful. Also for your spiritual advice, your encouragement, making sure there is money in my account throughout the period I was looking for work. Oh, Sister Christina, God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. David said, good wife is a jewel jewel in a man's crown he didn't end there he said a bad wife is what water in his okay okay I thank my children Ari, Abner, Alexander Nora my granddaughter Chiamaka always asking how I was getting on and encouraging me never to give up. I also want to thank my precious brother Wusu Abrakwa for always being there to talk to and for all his support and care. May God richly bless you all. The word of the Lord lived out in my home. Proverbs 31 verse 10 our brother says to God be all the glory to him and him alone. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Brother Alex, God is good, my brother. God is good. Though it tarry, wait for it. God is on time. On the back of all these testimonies, healing, provision, life, what, what, I, I pray you have no doubt in your mind about your situation. How many will say, God is good? Oh, hallelujah! Let's appreciate him. As we bring prayer requests before him, we are already saying, Lord God, you are good! Brother Glaston, sorry, sorry to spring this on you, Brother Glaston. But every time we are, we exhort God, 
Brother Gladstone would just get up. You just get up and just appreciate God. We all do. But it, it, it's just, he, he's very spontaneous. He just gets up. We, we, oh, we, we, we just love God. Sorry, my brother. It's a great thing. It, it's just that response. God is good. And you do something about it. You just say, oh, God is good. And your problem is weighing you down. No, 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 no. Get up and demonstrate that you believe. Even if you don't see it, it's already done. You see, the, the flesh wants you to sit down. Spirits! You, the spirit of God. So before we even pray, it's already done. Sister Adelaide is saying, please, saints, join me in prayer for healing. I've been battling severe pains in my knees and shoulders for some time, but I believe God is able this very morning to totally heal me. Church, I say God is good. It's not delayed. Just receive it. It's already done. From Brother Ajiman. On behalf of Sister Sarah, please, church, Join me in praying for my mom, Sister Sarah. She's down with flu. We ask that the Lord would touch and make every bit whole in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God is good. Amen. Then there's one more from Sister Vanessa asking the saints to join me in prayer for my mother. May God restore her to complete good health. God is good. Amen. Also from Brother Trevor all the way in Jamaica. Dear saints, please keep me in prayer as I am on a holiday in Jamaica. My thoughts are with you. Shalom. From Brother Trevor. Amen. Oh church, all together, let's bring this request before our Father's throne. Sister Solange, divine healing. Sister Sarah, divine healing. Sister Adelaide, divine healing. Brother Trevor, safekeeping. Precious Heavenly Father. Lord, we heard on Friday how King Hezekiah had a problem. But he also knew that beyond the problem, beyond the flesh, beyond the arm of flesh, beyond the army, was the unseen. The scripture said, they that be with us are more than they that are against us. Oh, how he took the letter to the temple and Lord, you read the letter yourself. Oh, what a deliverance. Father, you are a good God. We are thinking about how you have delivered brother Alfred. How you have delivered brother Abraham. So many deliverances among the bride around the world. Oh Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for the birthdays and all the provisions keeping us safe. You know, going out and coming in. Lord, you are a good God. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. Father, while we are rejoicing, we know you are unchanging. He said, I, the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob, you are not consumed. Lord God, Brother Bram said, it's just the faith of the people to accept what God has already done for them. We pray that the faith of Abraham the faith of this hour. We just take a hold in Sister Adelaide's heart right now. As your children, we join our hearts in prayer for those shoulder pains, knee pains to take their flights. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, when you broke, when you died, you broke the very back of Satan. Every disease was healed that very moment that our sister Adelaide will come back as all these others have come back 
to give you the glory. We remember Sister Sarah. But what is flu before the prayer of faith? Oh Lord, may the covenant angel visit our sister even now and make every weight whole for the glory of God. For the blood will never lose its power. As the Sarah will come back also to give you all the glory and the praise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May you also stretch your hand upon Sister Solange and restore her health, Father. For you restore it, even our soul. And she will come back and give you all the glory, Father. We also remember Brother Trevor. Thank you that he's already safely in Jamaica. For a holiday, may you give him rest. May you prosper his journey and bring him back safely to give you the glory. Lord, any other needs in the heart of your children, thou knowest them all. We leave them before you. You will turn them into thanksgiving for the glory of God. And now, Lord, as we turn our attention to the preaching of the word, the main reason why we are here, may the Holy Spirit himself speak through your servant, Brother Alan. Thank you for the gifts of God in his life. To be a light and a blessing to your children in so many places. Lord, may you strengthen your servant. It is the anointing that breaks the yoke. May the anointing for this hour be upon your son, your servant, as he preaches the unsearchable riches of Jesus Christ, that they will fall on good grounds of faith to move your church forward into rapturing faith. We ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ and the believers say, Amen. Oh, church, let's thank God for answered prayer. It's already done. So, brother, Alan is not a visitor. He's not a stranger. He's truly one of us. But Alan is uh, an evangelist who really does the work of an evangelist. But Abraham blasted Cushy evangelist. He didn't put it that way. It's me putting it that way. So evangelists go and they say in a Porsche hotel, five star, and they share trucks, and they come by and say, I was in a, in a mission field evangelizing. But once from a hotel, you are not. Brother Alan goes to the deep jungles. We've seen some of the videos where the people can hear the message so that they will hear this glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. And it's my privilege to welcome our precious brother Alan today. He landed yesterday. Our precious brother Mugi picked him up for us. Thank you, Brother Mugi. Well, Brother Mugi. Brother Mugi, thank you. Somebody has to do it on our behalf. Brother Mugi is always there. Thank you so much. So there was a bit of fellowship with Brother Alan, some of the brothers yesterday with Pastor. And this morning, by the grace of God, he's refreshed and he's here to be a blessing for us. Now church, don't look at Brother Alan. Look to Jesus behind the flesh, behind the veil. And I believe we'll be blessed as never before. As we rise to our feet, my prayer to invite our precious Brother Alan, my privilege, Brother Alan, please. We are ready for the preaching of the word as you come to the pulpit. Amazing grace. Amazing grace. Oh, raise your hands to the Holy Spirit. How sweet the sound that say such a wretch
gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God. Lord, and we pray that this day, not by strength, nor by might, but Lord God, by your mercy, by your grace, by your anointing, by your ever-living kindness, Lord God, that you will bless us. And Father God, that you will speak to our hearts, that you will strengthen us. And Father God, Lord, we pray, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, that we'll leave this building different, Lord, being changed and transformed. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Dear friends, you may be seated. Amen. Well, it's uh, indeed a great privilege to stand here before you. And I thank uh, Pastor Archie for the grace to open his pulpit up. That I can share the word of God with you this day. And I just pray that the word of God will be uh, a blessing to you, uh, an encouragement to you, and um, that you'll be strengthened. I'm, I'm, I'm so relaxed. Amen. I'm feeling good. You know, I feel so at home that I, I just know God's already here. And anything's possible, you know. Uh, I'm going to ask possibly for brother jesse's assistance today that he this has a microphone just ready just for when i read the quotations of the scriptures i feel like my mind's floating around and i've been there before and so maybe i might need some assistance in reading the quotations uh i i struggled for quite a while with that amen then i found out I didn't know what a reader was, you know, in the Anglican church and in some of the denomination churches, they have a reader. Right. And I, I just couldn't understand what that office was. And I met people and they said that, you know, there was a reader in the church. And I thought, what is a reader? <laughs> then I found out, I went to uh, a message church and one of the young brothers, uh, the pastor introduced him as they as their official reader and then I found out that a reader is someone who reads <laughs> and so all, for all them years I struggled at times you know when your mind's drifting in and out in the spirit it's hard to focus and I suffered uh, for all those years uh, trying to read the quotations and mumbling along then I found out it's okay to ask somebody to read Amen. So maybe today I might call upon Brother Jesse to do that. Amen. It's been... Uh, you know, why struggle? Amen. So if it's needed, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. I'll just know when I start reading, my mind will just start drifting. Uh, and it's not because I've not slept or anything like that. It's just the, 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 the atmosphere. So I thank God for uh, the privilege of being connected with the church. Uh, that's you all. And uh, I thank God for the pastor's friendship. It's very, uh, very warm, very encouraging. Uh, sometimes in the call and in the work that we do in the ministry, we get misunderstood and, you know, we don't all, because it's hard to understand the call on someone's life, sometimes we lack the encouragement. And so Brother Archie has been a, a source of a great encouragement for me to keep pressing on. And it's not always that I have the desire or I feel something uh, special. I just know what goes with it. There's a lot of trials, there's a lot of testings, there's a lot of testimonies but there's there's trials which come before the testimonies and so wherever you hear testimonies it's because someone's been going through some trials and so by the grace of God I have a lot of testimonies but I also have a lot of trials and it's hard to stay focused on which you want and you know we are humans as well so I'll just give you a short update I couldn't testify to everything what God has been doing this year or where I've been and it's this been wonderful uh it would take too much time up but 
I'd just like you, if you could continue to pray for me regarding Israel. That was one of the last trips that I went to. Uh, I felt the pull for Israel. Now, I'm not going for the Jewish people. Amen. But two, in 2015, I had the privilege, uh, the, uh, there was a pastor over there uh, that was in the message, Indian. And unfortunately, he got a little sidetracked, but I don't need to go into that. But in 2015... After much pleading from the pastor, uh, I, I uh, yielded to go to a convention in Israel, message convention, and I preached at it. And while I was there, I really, I'd always had something in my heart for it, but never really understood it. And uh, it's a calling for the ministry over there. I began to realize that there is so many Gentile people. Two and a half million Gentile people. And where we were, uh, there was Ethiopian churches. There was l l refugees. I didn't understand the working systems of Israel. It's very hard, very challenging for non-Jewish people to be in Israel. They don't make it the comfortable place. Now, uh, I felt a burden for the people. You know, a, a God burden. And so in 2016, I got, maybe I should have gone back. But I've been praying for it for quite some time. And I really, really felt that this trip that I would go on this year would be of the Lord. And, but I didn't know really how it would unfold. So it was a step of faith, you know. And Israel isn't the jungles of Africa. It's different. You know, it's one of the most expensive places on earth. So it requires, and then trying to explain to people that you're doing mission work and uh, it doesn't, people don't swallow it. You know, they, they think of the, you know, the sightseeing and the holiday, but really that wasn't really any pull whatsoever of my heart. But because I didn't know what the itinerary was or what it was going to be, I had to put some sightseeing in there just because I didn't know what was happening. And, uh, but I was ready to give up uh, any trip or any place that where I was for the opportunity to share and preach the gospel. Well, in a long story short, the trip was a blessing. And there have been, uh, you've got Jewish people, you've got Russian Jewish peoples that have come to the message there. You've got uh, Indian people. You've got people from all across Africa. You've got people from Europe. Oh, people from all over the world and the Philippines, all assembled really in Israel looking for work. And then there was one brother that had been on my heart. I met at Perry Green's church in 2015. Now I'm going to try and be quick about this. And it was a brother, a young brother we had called to the ministry. And Brother Perry Green had invited him to come and speak for him. And I was at the tabernacle at the same time. So we met in the den room. And we become, became good friends, and I be, tried to encourage him a lot. And he got a calling to Israel, amen, to go over. And the thing about uh, Israel, it's very hard. And I, one of the things that I noticed is that the, I always watch the devil, you know, the, in the sense that the devil's tactics is either to paralyze you one way not to go, or when you do go, he will try and push you over the edge. And so Israel's always lean, lean to extremes. So I was watching him for extremes because it's hard ground and you want to prove fruit. Amen. Well, basically, uh, Brother Colin uh, and his wife are doing very well over there. They're, as a pastor's heart, uh, you know, people are coming to the message. The churches are need stabilizing. Uh, one thing that I tried to encourage him when he went was to try and stabilize the churches that was already there because there wasn't really any strong ministry and they needed help. And uh, so things are happening very well. Is why I do believe 100% that his wife, I just love the sacrifice because he never went for economic reasons. He was already offered a pastoral ship of one of the large churches of the message because the pastor was getting very old. And he refused it and uh, went to Israel by faith, which wasn't very popular with his church. Then his wife over there is Jewish. 
and she was having problems in a uh, home and uh, she felt a need to go to Israel and while she was in Israel uh, seeking the Lord, uh, Jehovah, she had an experience at the Wailing Wall where she came to Christ. And, you know, so she left a lot. He left a lot going to Israel and she left even more because her grandfather was the financial advisor to the president. Her father was one of the leading spinal surgeons. Her mother has uh, doctor practices all across America. And she left that for almost obscure poverty to go uh, 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 to go to Israel. So God is doing something there amongst the Gentiles. <laughs> Jewish people are getting saved. You know, I had a rabbi translating for me. And so, you know, I've got a heart for Israel at the moment, and God is doing wonderful things. There, that's where my heart is, and, I, and obviously I'm going to the jungles as well. I would rather uh, be in the village than any palace. Amen. My heart, for some reason, is there. I just love the people. This is what I love about the people. Unlike ourselves in, in England and in London, where, you know, we have natural blessings and they, you know, we can't complain. You know, we shouldn't complain, you know, if we understand what the rest of the world's going through. But we do complain. Amen. And I'll go into that in a little bit. There's nothing wrong. Amen. About that. But I'll try and explain it. But so we have the comforts of life, but people are very cold. The you know, the, what we fight in England is the feeling. We lose the feeling because of the environment. And we lose the feeling for our brothers, our sisters, even for the word of God. And it, it, it's something that we have to remind ourselves and check ourselves. How are we feeling for one another? Is that compassion there? Because I believe in England, everything's against us to choke that out. As in the villages, this is the only thing they've got is feeling. And when, you know, so when I go there, I just feel the feeling of what the people feel. Uh, they make me feel like a king, you know, and you can make anyone feel like a king in this country. You can make your husband feel like a king. You can make your wife feel like a, a, a queen. You can make your brother feel like a prince. We have the ability to do that, but because of the circumstances, that compassion gets killed out. But the problem that they have is stealing because they don't have anything natural. So they, they have very hard laws towards stealing. Some, in some countries, it's instant justice. Amen. Because the pressure in another area, we're all fighting the same devil. Amen. So and that's where I am in general. I just want to remind you about that as you're living here. It's not, I'm feeling for you right now. You know, I could feel weepy for you and what you're going through. I just wish you could feel at times what it's like. Why I would go from a place like this, which has, you know, comfort your brothers, and just to walk into that atmosphere where, you know, anything is possible because of the compassion. And just to mention that, that the, the capstone does not come to singing, it does not come to gifts, but it comes to brotherly kindness. And brotherly kindness is our choice as individuals. Amen. Amen. The, this day, by the grace of God, I want to encourage you and I want to let you know that that which you are feeling of dissatisfaction, amen, is because we are in a fallen position. Amen. We're wanting more and more and more and more. Amen. And we know that the birds... They build the same nest year after year after year after year after year. But human beings are dissatisfied and they, be, uh, and they want to, to make something better for themselves. Amen. I believe, amen, that we've got to understand that, that we was created to be blessed. Amen. And, uh, and we've got to understand where our sources of blessings are. And the dissatisfaction, no matter how much you will live, and it's not that we rich men are not satisfied, we have one bag of silver, they, they want another. But I think as a believer that we live under our privileges, amen, and we have to go back to the lies of the devil. I don't believe in the prosperity gospel, 
because the prosperity gospel, this is a disclaimer, is it's not in the message, and we'll probably read a quotation which hammers that. Uh, but the prosperity gospel is very close. Uh, it's 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 blessings without trials, and uh, you know we want our blessings without the without the trials. And in the Odyssey, you can have that. You can have, you can you can be a multimillionaire and not struggle through life or do anything. But you will be of the poorest character on the planet. So we know power without character is satanic. So blessings without trials is is misplaced. So we've got to understand that we are blessings. Brother, if you can put the slide up, then we know where we're going. Then then I can start preaching and I want to go through one of my favorite people in the Bible again Paul but you know uh, and just pray by God's grace I believe that you know uh, the most powerful thing that we are given is the word of God it's more powerful than a vision a dream but they're good I've had many divisions, many dreams, many prophecies, and my spirit has not been 100% settled till I've seen that in the Word of God. And when I've seen it in the Word of God, it's unmoved me. But I've, maybe the vision and the dream uh, you know, uh, has been an encouragement, but I've got them to really anchor it in, in the Word. Amen. And then I'm sure... Because, you know, to really claim a, a, a move really in the supernatural and to have the faith to break through in the darkest trial, amen, which I, I'm preaching today, God will make your trial a blessing and faith to break through, amen. We need faith to break through, amen. So faith to break through, we need nothing doubting. And the only thing that is going to remove the doubts from our hearts is when we can really see ourselves in the word and be 100% convinced this is for me, this is the truth, and then it settles a doubting picture. Amen. Hallelujah. As Simon, Simon was struggling. Amen. That's Simon, uh, you know, Peter, to get it that the gospel would go to the Gentiles. And he was at Simon the Tanner's house, not Simon Peter's house, but Simon the Tanner, which was a different person. I found that out when I was in Joppa. I could talk about that place because inspiration is still over there. Where that great inspiration fell is where all the artists go, all the poets go, because there's a channel of inspiration still resting there. And we, by God's grace, we want to, to start a church somewhere near there, by the grace of God. Not being that it's spiritual. Is this something over there? These things in the Bible, they're, they're still there. You can see it as plain as you can be. I explained to the brother why all the artists is here is because of that inspiration. And why certain places are there. It's still linger, lingering. That inspiration that came down that caused Simon Peter not to doubt. You see, up to that point, he couldn't get it. And, and, and the Lord dropped a vision to him and showed him the word of God that, that what I call uh, clean, don't you call unclean. And the Bible said that Cornelius was at the door and Simon came down not doubting. So the chiefest devil that we will fight in our Christian walks, the biggest one, Brother Branham said, is doubting. And the only thing that will resolve that is when we can see ourselves in the word of God, identify God is speaking to me, then that devil of doubting can be removed, then, then the channel for the supernatural and a solid anchoring of, of stability will, will be in our lives. And that's what I want to go through today in the, in the word of God. Brother Branham when he was over in uh, Finland and he was just going about his normal business and he was caught up in the meetings and his mind was maybe here and there. Then he saw an accident and all of a sudden something stopped him and checked him in his spirit and he says, I recognize this. 
I've seen this accident before. And he says, aha, that is it. The, where he, he wrote it down in the Bible, the raising of a dead boy. But when he saw himself in the vision, he said faith struck his heart. And he said it was over then. And so, like I said, the highest thing that we can see, uh, the highest thing we've been given is the word of God. If we can be convinced that in the word of God these things are for us, then we can add them. Now, my friend, I just want to take that thought to you. You see, some people's faith is so weak that they think if they can get to the UK, that they will be blessed. Amen. Amen. And some people, they think if they can get to Europe, that they will be blessed. And some people think if they can get to the U.S., they will be blessed. Amen. But the, but the place of blessing is trials. The place where God has ordained your blessing is in the midst of trials. And the kind of faith and trust that we've, we've got to have is to realize that even though we are in hell fire itself, that we can say, not doubting in, the heart, in our hearts, is that I know, 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 without question, that this is working for my good. For all things are working for our good. And that's the position that we've got to realize and we've got to understand that God has all the, the blessings that we should have received through the garden. Amen. Hallelujah. God still wants us to be blessed that way. He hasn't changed his mind. But now is the ordaining place for the blessings is trials. If you're in a trial right now, I can absolutely guarantee you, according to the word of God, that you should be excited because there's a blessing about to fall on you. Amen. But, but brother, it's not when everything is going easy that the blessings of God come. But it's when everything is going dark and everything is, uh, is unquestionably uh, out of control. This is the source of blessings. This is the source what God has ordained for those blessings. Because he's interested that we have the character developed in the trial so the blessing can fall. He wants us to be in the image of Christ. Amen. He doesn't want us to be in the image of Laodicea. Oh, look at me. I've got a, 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 Leo, a, a Learjet. I have all this. I have all that. And the, the, the head is so big you can't even get it through the church door. That, that you know, we, we can't go ahead of God. God, you must understand and be and rest in your spirit that God wants to bless you. And I want to convince you this day without a shadow of a doubt that God wants to bless you beyond your imagination. When the chips are down, rejoice because there's something good on the, uh, at the end. And the blessing is bigger than what you can imagine. We have to go back to the beginning. Dear brother, if we can go to slide two. And if, oh, praise God, there's a, as we're going to slide two, then I, I just want to take four words from this. And if God gives me grace, I'll try and go through it. Amen. This, this, this day with you. But I want... You to really understand that when God, uh, and forgive me for not asking you to stand, but I, I just want to redeem a little bit of time. Amen. We did pray. Amen. So I've done better than I normally do. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I want you to understand when God made man in his image and made him in his likeness. Amen. Hallelujah. And he's like I've said before, God's never changed his mind about that. His plan for that has never changed. And God cannot change his, his mind. So after he created man, amen, in his image and his likeness, I want to take the first four words, and God blessed them. Now when God made man, he made him to receive blessings. And he blessed them. And God is in the blessing business. So you've got to really go back to the beginning and say, God has not changed his mind, amen, about blessing me. God has not changed his mind about blessing my situation. God, his mind has not 
changed. Hallelujah. And I want to convince you this day, amen, the story ends up better than what you can think, what you can imagine, amen. You've got to remember that God hasn't blessed you that you may be head and shoulders above your neighbors, amen, like King Saul or some denomination, but he's blessed you for the one and sole purpose that the gospel may be spread. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. And I don't want to upset anyone, but when he blessed Joseph, Amen. After all these trials, you've got to remember wherever Joseph went, God blessed him. Even in Potiphar's house, he blessed him. Even in the darkest trial that you can imagine, amen, as being a slave, God blessed him and met him as in shoulders above anyone else or right next to Potiphar. When they threw him in prison unjustly, God made that trial a blessing and made him one of the most blessed and feared men in that prison amen and God hasn't changed his mind about that he will bless you wherever you are whatever the trial whatever the circumstances but when he blessed Joseph amen he didn't just finish amen with being being uh in the prison he didn't finish this finish with being uh, a helping party for but it became a blessing which was beyond even Joseph's imagination that he blessed him amen hallelujah uh, at the right hand of, of, of Pharaoh. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. That he may be a blessing to his brethren. Amen. God only blessed him that he may bless his brethren. But his character had to be shaped and molded. Amen. So he became, you know, a different person to what he was before the trial. And that's what God wants to do with you. Uh, that when the blessings come, they don't mean much. Amen. It's this we thank God and we're able to do something for the Lord. But, but the mindset that life is always going to be hard without any blessings is not exactly correct. Amen. Sometimes, like I said, Simon, because of the cultural environment that he was in, Simon Peter, he couldn't see that the gospel would go to the Jews. Now, because of the cultural environment that we go through, and sometimes a trial being so dark and so long, we never think that there will be any blessings. And we get a bit of a martyr spirit. Amen. But God brings us out and brings us through. Amen. You've got to remember that, you know, uh, let's read slide six. Brother, you, Jesse, you can read this for me. Amen. I just want you to read this and, and, and understand, hallelujah, that God's way, which is the harder way, amen, is blessings in disguise. Notice, Ruth was willing to forsake her idols, forsake her past life, forsake her people, forsake everything and return with Naomi. No matter what the circumstances was, she was willing to go on. That's the way every man that comes to Christ must first be willing regardless. I never like to tell the people, oh, you're going to prosper and to be a rich man now and God's going to bless you. You ain't going to have no sickness. I don't promise them that because God doesn't promise them that. Cancel out the prosperity gospel. Amen. I say, if you're really born again in your heart, I don't care how rough the road gets, you'll still hold on to God's unchanging hand. No matter what that lays before me, if Jesus goes with me, I'll go. Hallelujah. It long as he goes, that's all that's necessary. Amen. As we see from here, Ruth, she chose the harder way. And the harder way Amen. We start of a very difficult journey to the point that Naomi said, go back. <coughs> There's no, the, is there any more uh, sons in my womb for you? She promised her no husband, no comfort, no nothing. Amen. To go that journey. Amen. But that journey left her to blessings beyond imagination. Amen. Amen. But the thing about Ruth, Ruth was so in love with Naomi that she was going to go anyway. She wasn't, she wasn't even, even I think if she was promised those things, amen, which she wasn't, amen, her relationship with Naomi was love. And that's the way we've got to be with this message. We have to love this message. Regardless of how hard, how difficult, how trying these words may come, we have to stay with them. 
Hallelujah. Amen. You see, this way molded Ruth's character. You see, Ruth, Naomi didn't know it, but she was bringing Boaz a wife. Amen. And God was bringing Boaz a wife and God was answering Boaz's prayers for a wife. But Boaz needed a certain sort of wife. Boaz didn't need a rich wife. He didn't need a wife who was high in society. He needed a wife of character. So the trial that she was going through was molding her character that was making her irresistible. Amen. To Boaz, to where Boaz this had to marry her, and whatever Boaz had was now Ruth's. And that's the way that God has ordained for us. Sometimes it, we can't understand it. Amen. But it's molding our character that we're sticking with this word of God, with the ups and downs and trials and uh, uh, mountaintops and valleys that we go, go through. That in the eyes of Jesus Christ, it makes us irresistible to him. That we out a question that we have proven to Satan why we are here. Yeah. One thing that you must understand with God, that there is two mountain tops to every valley. Though you may be in a valley, there is more blessings than there is trials. You must realize and have the faith to, to understand that you're coming out, that it's God's will to bring you out. And don't ever let the devil lie to you that you'll, you'll always stay in this condition because you've got to understand and read the, the end of the book. If we go to slide three, uh, 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 hold on. We'll go to slide three, yes. Jeremiah said, For I know the thoughts which I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. You see, we must be convinced that this God wants to bless us. And, uh, and even Paul could say this. This was not Paul just speaking from his experiences, which we can go into and look in detail. And we, um, Paul said in uh, Romans 8, 28, we know that all things work together for good to them that, are, that love God and to those that are called according to his so no matter what is happening, somehow is bringing you to your destiny, to your purpose in God. Amen. One thing that you also got to be aware of, that God has ordained that we are blessed. Amen. But the devil knows that. And the realisticness of the devil, if we go to slide four, for, but we, brethren, being taken from you, this is 2 Thess Thessalonians 2.17, uh, from you for this short time in presence, but in heart endeavor the more abundantly to see your face with great desire. Therefore we would have come unto you, but even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan ended us. You see, even Paul said, I, Paul, even I, Paul, the great apostle, was hindered by Satan, not once, but time and time and Time again, you've got to realize that you have a real devil that is trying to prevent you, amen, hallelujah, and some areas he may get temporary victory but not win the war because the purpose for God in your life, amen, cannot be ended, amen, it, there's nothing can stop it. Amen. And this is why he said, called according to the purpose of God. You have a purpose of God for being uh, in the end time, the greatest time whatsoever, to manifest Jesus Christ. And no matter how hard the devil tries, amen, he cannot hinder that purpose. That we can truly say that no weapon that is formed against us will prosper. But God, through it all, will work his blessings. No matter how much the devil tries, or no matter how much, is this the tool in the hand of God that God will make him work for his glory? Like my precious uh, sister who was sick, amen, and this, uh, which was the devil, amen, trying to hinder her. But God used it for his glory because now the doctors broke cast. Amen. The glorious work of his miracle. Amen. He makes it all work for his good, for his purpose, for, for everything. That at the end of it all, he will be glorified. Amen. And we can live in the shadow, amen, of his manifested presence, bringing them blessings down upon us. Brother, 
Well, for mercy drops, we uh, we are. Mercy drops around us are falling, but for the showers we plead. Brother, there's times of showers of blessings, which we've got to give God thanks and glory, glory for. And I believe that he does. You see, being a Christian, being in the end time message, being part of the bride causes us to read the Bible in a different way where we can read between the lines a love story. Brother, it's not about Jesus Christ beating his bride down, giving her a hard time. It's about Jesus Christ strengthening his bride, protecting his bride, and being there when she needs him. And that is always on time. And that's the way we've got to read the word of God. Sometimes we, 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 we because of circumstances, we look at the word of God and we're not seeing it clearly. One of my favorite Bible characters, like I've said before, was Paul. Because Paul was a man determined to stay with God's word. Amen. No matter what, he said, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. Amen. Amen. We've been given a message at this end time which we must not be disobedient to. And we must stay with. Then we can uh, be counted with them. Now, one thing that we I want to show you this day in the next 25, 30 minutes not rushing too much, but I'm going to go through it, amen, is that how much God bless Paul. We've got to read it correctly. Amen. amen. We've got to read it through, through, through the eyes of being in love with Jesus Christ. Amen. Not through the eyes of being on the, uh, of being on the, the like uh, scraping the boils and feeling sorry for yourself. But you've got to read it that no matter what is going on, that your love, because Paul said, what can separate us from the love of God? That these trials had not separated Paul from the love of God. And because of that, he had hope and positiveness. You see, we must keep no matter what, Lord, I love you and praising you and, and keeping it that way. Now, Paul was a wonderful Bible character. He spent a night and a day in the deep. And he was given over to fight wild beasts. Brother, he, was, he had some serious trials. But Paul said, I know how to, to uh, abase and I know how to abound in all things that I am content. You, so, so we read about those things where Paul was, was in his trials, but we must understand that Paul had his blessings as well. Amen. And Paul's blessings are bigger than what we probably previously thought. Amen. So if he had his, if he knew how to, uh, how to rejoice in prison, then he must have known how to rejoice driving a Cadillac, you, because you know he said so. So we've got to find those also these things out in the Bible where Paul was blessed. Otherwise, we'll just think we just live on bread and water all our lives and prisons and things. But he said those things. You see, contentment is a wonderful thing. You see, where Satan fell is because he wasn't content. God had given a position. Amen. And he wasn't happy with that position in life. He wanted more. He wasn't content. So this discontent now became the, the driving force for his ambition. But if we are content in the sense that we can praise God in our trials, we won't allow the devil, amen, to anoint and give us a wrong ambition. We've got to be content, amen, being a song leader, content being a brother coming to the church. If God has given us this position, be content, amen, and don't seek something else, amen. If God lead you in another direction. Let God do the leading and let the body confirm, confirm it. Otherwise, we become the devil's playground. Amen. So contentment is where the fall started in the beginning because he was not content. So that's why Paul says it twice, amen, in the, in the, in the scriptures about being content. Amen. Because it's important. Amen. Otherwise, we fall and identify ourselves as being on the wrong side. We must be what? God, you're not happy? Do you think God's left you? Amen. You think God doesn't know where you are? You think his arm's too short? He doesn't, he, he hasn't heard your prayers? That you're more wiser than him? That you would like a better position? You'd like out of it before time? Amen. So who are you to question your creator and where was you before the foundation of the earth? 
Amen. Why could, why could Satan question his creator like, like he knew something better? Brother, wherever you are in your Christian work, believe me, God is going to make it a blessing. He'll, he'll bring you, amen, that all things uh, will, and you'll miss it. And God told me that, you know, you must go to where he's leading. And if it's this to sit in the church, just sit in the church because you'll miss where he wants you to go next. You'll miss the direction. You'll miss the blessings. You'll miss everything. Some brothers, I talked to a brother not too long ago who had a calling on his life. Amen. But he couldn't understand it. The pastors that he was sitting under wasn't interested in his calling. And I said, well, the pastors that you're un under don't really help young men, but they help marriages. And while you're there, let your marriage be strengthened that you can be a good minister when God calls you. But if he gets this content, he'll go before God. And then it will be a very hard, disastrous time, possibly. I don't know what would take place in his marriage. So we have to be content where God is leading us because God knows better. And maybe some older brothers or older pastors can look at the situation and see what God's doing. Amen. And that's the privilege of experience. Amen. It's like, you know, a young brother gets married and he's in the married club, but we don't go to him for marriage counseling because he hasn't got the experience. But somebody who's been married 30 years and pastored for a long time and counseled people for a long time, before you come through the door, they already know your, your questions. Amen. And they already know the outcome. And they know whatever decision you make, what's going to happen. That's the blessing of experience. And we must, uh, and God is, his experience is beyond the pastors. And sometimes even the pastor has to blindly obey God. Amen. And trust him. Amen. Hallelujah. Like we have to blindly obey God sometimes and trust him. So we're talking about that absolute love and trusting God and, and, and that our trials, that though they be heavy, amen, will be a blessing to us. Now Paul, like I said, he, he, he had some hard times. But let's talk about his good times too. It, in my opinion, it turned out wonderful for Paul. Because I've read the book and I've studied the history. Amen. And I needed to because I needed it as much as anyone else. It's a two-edged sword. Amen. Before I can bless you with the word, the word must have had some effect on me for me to be this convinced about it. I'm convinced about it because it worked in my life. Amen. And it's not that it's worked in my life. I feel that I just want to share it with you this day because God's laid it on my heart. Amen. So Paul, I think we're getting up to... Acts 24, something like that. I'm gonna because of time, I'm gonna miss some of the scriptures, but I know if you read from Acts 21 onwards, amen, then you'll understand the latter years of Paul through the book of Acts. So it's a nice Bible read, it doesn't take too long, but maybe you can read it again after you've read the message a little bit and see it a little bit. Amen. And you see, in Acts 21, thank you, Brother Joshua, as we tarried. There for many days we came down to Judea and a certain prophet come. Amen. So Paul had just come from a mission trip and he was refreshing himself with the saints down in Ju Judea and everything was unky dory. Amen. Everything was going wonderful. Amen. Then all of a sudden a certain prophet came. Amen. So we know that that's a fivefold prophet. Amen. It's not in. It's not the Old Testament prophets, which is a completely different order. Amen. Which Brother Branham said, I'm not in the in that order. He was in the Old Testament order. Amen. Hallelujah. And he and he came uh, 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 and. And when he came unto us, he took Paul's girdle and bound, <coughs> and bound his hands and feet and said, Thus saith the Holy Ghost, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind that, that man who oweth this girdle and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. You see, Paul wasn't wanting that word. Actually, the church wasn't wanting that word. We'll find that in the, in the next one. And when they heard these things, both we and they, uh, the, <coughs> we and they of that place, besought him not to go up to Jerusalem. Amen. So they said, Paul, Paul, do not go up to Jerusalem. Agabus must be a false prophet. We've judged it. Amen. But Paul knew that he had a calling to the Gentiles on his life. 
And Paul, and he was only witnessing what Paul already knew. And Paul was the sort of character that, he, that Paul answered, What mean ye to weep and break my heart? For I am ready not to just be bound only, but to go to Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. And, he, uh, and when he could not be, not be persuaded, we see saying, uh, we, uh, we see saying, the Lord's will be done. Amen. You see, you've got to understand when I'm, you see, this is what I mean. My mind's drifting. This, I'm going to have to pull Joshua in, in a, oh, sorry, uh, Jesse in, in a, in a moment. Amen. So you see by this, the Paul, no matter what, I determined to keep the word of God. Yeah. 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 He himself didn't know the outcome. He didn't know what was really be waiting him. He didn't know what was going to happen. The situation didn't look bad. But one thing Paul knew, all things work together for my good. So if I'm going to go to Jerusalem, to this lion's den, it's going to work together for my good. He knew that he could stand there and have the testimony Daniel had. I was put in a lion's den, but it worked for my good. Because all things work for my good. You see, he didn't know the outcome. He just had to trust God. And that's the way we've got to be when we come to church and we determine no matter what to come to church and keep the word of God. I assure you this day, as Paul was blessed, you will be blessed. You see... No matter how I'm going to read through it, you're going to find out how much Paul was blessed. Amen. And by keeping that word of God, the first thing, this is paraphrasing it, is that because I've got, uh, I just want to give it 15 minutes. As Paul, don't look at the clock. As Paul, you may miss your blessing. As Paul, amen, hallelujah, glory to God. He went to Jerusalem, Amen. And he was handed over, according to prophecy, f by the Jews, amen, as being a, and he was falsely accused. I don't want to go into all the details because of time. But he basically fal falsely accused. They laid hands on him, amen. And he was falsely accused. He was doing no harm, amen, whatsoever in the temple. But they falsely accused him, and, uh, and so... They handed him over to the Gentiles, and then he was saved by the, the Gentiles, by the, the centurion saved him. Amen. Hallelujah. But Paul was one hot potato. No one knew what to do with Paul. He was a trouble now to Agrippa. He was a trouble to Felix. He was a trouble to everyone because Paul was God's anointed, and while he was in prison, uh, the Lord came to him and said, as you bear witness for me before uh, 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 in Jerusalem, you will bear witness for me, amen, in Rome. God, Paul had the word of God to hold on to. No matter what was going on, amen, the word of God had to come to pass, amen. So Paul, amen, knew that his trial was going to come a blessing. You see, Paul wasn't any normal kind of prisoner. He was a political prisoner. And political prisoners get different treatment from other prisoners to begin with. Amen. Hallelujah. And not only that, Felix, I think it's in Acts, uh, Acts 24, and uh, he commanded a centurion to keep Paul and to let him have his liberty that he should forbid none of his acquaintance to come and minister unto him. So actually in prison, Paul could walk around. And anyone who wanted to come and see Paul came and see Paul in prison. And Paul, whatever Paul needed when he was in prison, he got in prison because Paul was a prisoner to Christ. And he wasn't a prisoner to Rome. So prisoners to Christ, them who are constrained to keep the word of God, God is going to make the trial of blessing and change it around. And he changes not. If he did it for Paul, he'll do it for you. Brother, we are not of the world. What happens to the world when they go to prison doesn't happen to us. We are different people. What happens in the workplace does not happen to us. We're not, we cannot be identified to them. 
We are prisoners to Christ and not this world system. The story has to be different. You see, there came a report from Paul's, I think it was his, his, his nephew. Amen. So we had a sister. His sister's son, his nephew. Amen. And to warn that the Jews, I took a vow that they will not eat nor drink till Paul is dead. Amen. So they died of starvation. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. And so they, they told them, and they said, oh, we better get Paul out of here. He had 200 foot, foot soldiers with spears as God. 200, I think, horsemen, foot soldiers, centurions, everyone protecting Paul. At the, at the expense of Rome, Paul had armed body guard protecting him so no one could do him any harm. You see, Paul could never afford those things. And he was at liberty, my friend. Read it. Hallelujah. Then you find out that he, 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 he sailed from Caesarea. Amen. And, when he, and then he made friends. Uh, Julius, Felix had given him favor. Julius now gives him favor. So Julius the centurion of the, says, Paul, I like you. You're really nice. There's something about you. You're different from all the other prisoners. And so Felix, uh, so Julius says, Paul, we're at Zidonia. You have some friends here. Look, just go off the ship. Go and refresh yourself. And Paul went to Paul went to Zidonia at the expense of Rome, saw all his friends, got refreshed, come back on ship with more blessings from the people blessed him down in Zidonia. Amen. So he comes back on ship, gives something to Julius, I imagine, and something to the other prisoners. Amen. And and Paul, even he has the audience where he can talk to the owners of the ship. What kind of prisoner gets to talk to the owners of the ship? And he says to the owners of his ship, you shouldn't sail at this time of the year because the feast has passed. It's October. So it means that the, the weather system is very dangerous. And Paul warns them of that. But because of their greed, because he's on a ship from Alexandria, amen, his ships from Alexandria carry precious cargo and they have to go to Rome to sell the cargo. They say, no, we've got to make some profit. And Paul says, no, you shouldn't do this. So they, they, they sail along and they hit the storm. Tem these winds come which are so severe that they damage the ship. Temptibious winds from a, a wind called Eroclodon. That's a European cyclone. That just means Euro cyclone. It's a, a wind which comes up. Amen. I don't want to go, 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 go into it. It's a European cyclone. Let's go, go, go back. Amen. It comes up in the Mediterranean. Just, just leave it there. Brother, if I, if I, I'll tell you which slide to go, go, go to. Amen. Because it makes me stop and read them. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. So, so anyway, they're going to the isle called Cloda. Amen. And, and Paul's saying, you shouldn't sail from here. The ship has been so damaged. Hallelujah. <laughs> that they have to take it out and repair it. And Paul says, no, winter here. It's going to be dangerous and they don't listen to Paul, but Paul has the ability to speak to them. So anyway, they set sail and we know that the storm was terrible because it lasted 14 days and 14 nights. Amen. You can go to wherever slide that is, the 14 days and 14 nights slide, which would be, yeah, slide 15, dear friend. Hallelujah. So I'm just paraphrasing things to go through. I don't want to rush, but I just want to show you something. Amen. So Paul is in, uh, this is like, Paul is in, hallelujah, one of the worst storms that you can imagine. This is a cyclone out in sea. These cyclones sink ships like, like the QE2. No one ever survived them. This is why they were greatly feared to go. Amen. Hallelujah. But Satan got into that because Paul had a purpose on his life to go to, to Rome. Hallelujah. And, and he was trying to hinder Paul. But the purpose for his life cannot be hindered. Now, Paul, amen, right in the middle of the storm. I'm in the starkest place you can imagine, a cyclone. The angel of the Lord comes down and speaks to Paul. Brother, there 
is not a stone that big that God cannot speak to you. The one word of God in your stone will change your opinion. You see, Paul had heard God in the middle of the storm where they hadn't seen day, daylight for 14 days or 14 nights and all hope had gone. But Paul had heard from God and said, be of good cheer. He said, rejoice. It's going to be fine because the word of God says. Brother, I want to tell you and sister this day, rejoice because the word of God says you have an expected end. And that all things are working together for your good. And by his stripes you are healed. And that he is your provider. Brother, be convinced of that like Paul was convinced of that. That, that, that your testimony is infectious. You see now what happens. Paul is so full with joy in the middle of the storm. Jumping up and down and rejoicing. While everyone else is feeling sorry that all hope is gone. But as far as Paul was concerned. The word of God had to come to pass. Amen. Amen. Praise his holy name. Do you believe that? Hallelujah. Now what happens because of Paul's joy in the midst of his trial. Paul becomes captain of the ship. Paul, the prisoner, whatever Paul says, has to, ha they have to obey. They are afraid now to disobey Paul's word. Paul says fast, so they all fast. <laughs> Paul says do not let down the, 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 the lifeboats or we'll all perish. So they cut the lifeboats. He says the ship will be lost and all its goods, but we will survive. Brother, that is a child of God. That's a brother that can, uh, that can say, God will make my trial a blessing. You see, these are the mercy drops. These are the witnessings of God. Amen. You see, the ship goes down. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. Go to slide 20. The ship goes down. There's no light. Hallelujah. No, the slide above. There's no light. There's no nothing. It's dark. We, they know the sound, the, the sound of the ship. And they know that they're coming to the fair havens. They're coming to a creek, which means they're coming to a harbor. Amen. And, uh, and so, hallelujah. The ship's gone down and all the goods that was given in Zidon, Paul lost. He lost his passport. He lost, he, he lost his iPad. He lost his computer. He lost his iPhone. He lost all his food, all his supplies for which had been given him. Went down with that. Amen. But when the ship went down, Paul never gave up. Paul started swimming to shore. Brother, when, when the ship goes down, start swimming. Because Paul turned round to to he turned round to Silas and says, Silas, all things are working together for our good. Let us sing. Amen. So they started singing in the midst of prison after being beaten, and the next minute an earthquake comes, and the leaders of the city come fearing Paul. Do you know uh, uh, that you are a child of God and that your trial is your place of blessing? If you can see that everywhere there was a trial in the Bible, there was a blessing. Have you not heard of the patience of Job? Amen. So Paul, you, he comes out of that, the captain of the ship and everything else. You see, when he lands on the Isle of Malta, the barbarians, the Bible says, showed him no little kindness. That means they were so hospitable to him. They came rushing with food. These are cruel, hard-hearted people. Why not one person had ever survived that storm? And uh, 276 people survived that storm by obeying Paul. Because Paul was there. You see, God says, I give you the people as well. Paul knew, amen, that he would survive no matter what. 
But Paul was in the business of winning souls and bringing people out of darkness into light and out of the kingdom, out of the power of Satan to the power of God. And he was praying for the, those people and God says, I give them you. Amen. You see, even though he was in prison, the soul got saved. And you've got to understand that one soul is worth more than 10,000 worlds. Yeah. And the, the, the trial that you're going through, at the end of it, a soul gets saved. Or uh, your testimony affects someone to come to Christ. Amen. It is little in the eyes of God to the value of a soul. Amen. And that's, uh, uh, God has got to be glorified in all things. So the barbarians showed them no little kindness because no one ever survived. And no matter what happens out there, no matter what the financial storms are, no matter what the trouble that people are going through, we are not of this world. We are of a different kingdom. What happens to them does not happen to us because it takes them out. And the doctors say no one survives this. Brother, that is not our report. That storm may have took out thousands, but we will survive it because we are different people. See yourself in the word. Be convinced that God wants to make your trial a blessing. You see, Paul gets to shore, amen, and he doesn't feel sorry for himself. It is raining, it is cold, so he makes a fire. Just keep on keeping on. So he's busy making a fire, doing something, not sitting down saying, when will my ship come in? I can't take it no more. Paul knew that all things would work together for his good because he only had what we have, the word of God to trust. And what can separate you from the love of God? Understand that God's purpose is to bless you. So out, uh, so the people are saying, oh, these men are just, they must be, they must have been falsely accused or something to survive this. So Paul, amen, because it's raining and dark, a viper comes out, amen, hallelujah. Go to slide 24, my friend, and strikes his hand. Hallelujah, slide 24, I think it is. The picture with the snake. That one, correct. Amen. So, what Paul did, the viper lashed onto him and it wasn't letting go. Amen. Satan was determined to have him. Things weren't getting any better. But Paul just shook it off. And when the devil gets hold of you and the lies and the situations are getting really bad and even worse than what you can imagine, shake it off. Just shake it off. Don't allow it to hold on to you. Don't allow it. Just shake it off. Know that all things are working together for your good. You don't know the outcome, but God knows the outcome. You see, God allowed that storm to bring Paul to the Isle of Malta because God had a purpose. And that storm could not destroy him. Amen. Because Publius, amen, the the chief man of the island said, Paul, how did you not die? You, there's something special about you. So he's had favor with Felix, favor with, with Julius, and now he gets favor with Publius. Now Publius is the chief man of the island. Now this is in the days when wealth is not equal. And being the chief man of the island means he, he lived in the biggest palace. So Paul the prisoner spends three months in a palace. Because your trials have got to be a blessing, my friend. Because God knows the end from the beginning and a purpose for that. And Paul owes a revival for three months in Malta, living in a exuberant riches. Read it. I'm in love with God. It doesn't read misery to me. It reels trials and blessings, trials and blessings. The protection of God in every situation. The deliverance of God in every situation. No matter the weapon, God will turn it round and make it a blessing. Make it testify. Amen. Then it's already done. Hallelujah. 
Alleluia. So Paul, amen, the Bible says, it's in, uh, it, uh, I'll go to it, amen. Is it slide? Amen. Well, you can go to slide 25. And in the same quarters where possessions of the chief man of the island, Publius, whose name was Publius, who received us and lodged us three days of his courtesy, but he stayed there for three months on that island. Amen. Hallelujah. Go to the next slide. Who, who also honored us with many honors. And we departed, and they laid in us with such things as were necessary. Now, honor us, us with many honors mean they bless Paul beyond imagination with wealth. Because God knew where Paul was going. And God knew that the church never had that kind of money to send Paul, amen, there. Hallelujah. So he took the actual barbarous people and he took the Romans to finance Paul's mission trip. Because no matter what, the enemy is this the tool in the hands of God. And he made a laughing stock of the whole situation. And God's purpose was getting Paul there. That it seemed impossible. Amen. And after three months, we departed from, from Alexander. Uh, we, uh, we departed in a ship, another ship from Alexandria. Alexandria was Egypt, the wealthiest arbor in the world at that time, uh, which, wintered, uh, which wintered in the Isles. They had so much wealth that they was not going to risk the storm like the other people was. But this one was under the sign of Poster and Calix. Uh, Castor and Pollux, amen, hallelujah, just stop, no, no, just stop there, amen, hallelujah, that means in modern language, it, it came from the wealthiest manufacturers, amen, Alexandria, Alexandria, but Poster and Calix was a sign on the ship, now only the most luxurious ships had that sign, it was a, the equivalent of the silver lady, if I said, oh, uh, Brother Archie arrived in church uh, and on the front of the car was a silver lady, you know I'll be talking about a Rolls Royce. So when they talked about Poster, uh, Castor and Pollux, they know that they, they're talking about the most luxurious ship. And there is the Apostle Paul going to Rome, a prisoner, amen, suffering, amen, all terrible things, amen, going in a Rolls Royce. Laden with wealth that what you could even, you can't imagine. So when he arrived at Rome, all the saints was waiting for Paul. And there came this Rolls Royce and the apostle Paul steps off it. And he's got the finest garments and jingling with all coins. Amen. And all the prisoners, you can read it in, carry on reading it in chapter 28. All the prisoners go in one direction and Paul goes in another direction. Amen. God, brother, don't, it's not misery. God is your protector in all circumstances. The purpose of God has to be preached in Rome. Now Rome, you've got to understand, is the most expensive real estate in the world. Just to own a, a little corner plot would cost billions. Well, millions. A role, and Paul has to go there and start a church. Paul the prisoner. Amen. Hallelujah. So what Paul does, he's been set at liberty in Rome. He's not, he's, he's at liberty. We'll read it. And so Paul, uh, he, 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 the first thing he does, he hires a place. He buys a place. He hires it. The Bible says it's for two years. He paid for it out of his own money. He financed a building so big because he couldn't build a church, so he must have got a villa. It was so big that all the Jewish citizens could come in. The Bible says that all the Jews, many of the Jews came to Paul. And he had a meeting with them. So it was so big that he could, he, he, could, he could seat them all. And from that villa in Rome, he walks to Caesar. And he's having audience with Caesar. 
Amen. Let's read it. You may, you may have overread it, but you see when you're in love with Jesus Christ, the Bible reads different. Let's go to slide 28. And when he came to Rome, the centurion delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guards, but Paul was suffered to dwell by himself with a soldier that kept him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This is slide 29. And when, and when they appointed him a day, they came many to him in his lodgings to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God and persuaded them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets. Let's go to slide, 20, uh, slide 30. And Paul dwelt a whole two years in his own house and received all that came unto him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those Things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence and no man forbid him. You see, he had Roman protection in Rome. Because he was a prisoner that said, no matter what, I don't know what the outcome is. There's been nothing promised me. It looks difficult. Like Ruth. But he said, no matter what, if it's death, I am going. And the outcome for Paul was that he was living in the richest. These are the times where Paul says, I know how to abase. And I know how to abound. This is Paul eating lamb, writing the scriptures in his house. Because the public, I, in my mind, I'm thinking that the publishing work needs to be done. So he needed some money for the publishing work of the gospel. But you see, until the purpose of God in his life was finished, Satan could not touch him. And when the purpose of God was finished, then he could say, a crown awaits me. You see, brother, you've got to understand when God made us, he intended us to be a blessing. And no matter how much Satan tries to hinder, he cannot hinder them ordained blessings from God. So we must rejoice in our trials. We must trust God in our trials. We've got every reason to stay with this message because as far as I can understand by reading the word of God, the expected end is not just we walk in the streets of glory, but we see God in the end of the living and we see the supernatural in intervention you see blessing means supernatural intervention of God the word blessing means for God to supernaturally intervene on your behalf Amen. time is gone it has been good I just encourage you my friend to press on if you no matter you see the pur if it's the purpose of God for you to have a church in London, the price matters not. It's God's purpose. He can give you a church. I've seen churches come by the spoken word. Do not limit God to your measly wages. It's you not to figure out how you're going to do it. You go crazy. Is this for you to believe God will make this trial not a burden? Oh, oh, but a blessing. That everything that, 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 that you are doing, God will make it a blessing. That through the trial, it is a blessing. It's time to rejoice. It's time to praise God as musician comes forward. And Brother Archie comes forward. I'm trying to redeem you the time. But I want you to understand that when you can see it in the Word of God, the, the preaching of the Word of God casts out demons, casts out doubts. Don't doubt 
Amen. In the middle of uh, the, the darkest storm that God does not have an expected end for you. Now, I'm going to call the pastor forward, but it, I know time is late. But if anyone wants any prayer, I, I'll leave it for the, the, the pastor or whoever is closing. Amen. I'm willing to pray, but because of the, the time. Amen. You see, my belief is if you can see it in the word of God, you don't need prayer. You can proclaim it in yourself. That no matter what God has called and asked you to do, don't doubt. And whatever you do, don't look at you, don't look at your wallet. Don't look at your don't do nothing. Just serve God. And God will always come in a miraculous way. With testimony after testimony after testimony after testimony. You don't know the end, but God knows the end. Dear brother, if you will come. Amen. Hallelujah. God will. Not maybe, but God will make your trial a blessing. mind on the Lord Jesus. Believe the, the dove has landed in the camp with a message. Hallelujah. Every mind on the Lord. same song please keep your mind on the Lord right now every hand raise hallelujah keep your mind on the Lord right now every hand raise brother Brunham said that's your antenna that's your antenna believe in Believing faith to break through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Demons scatter. The word of God goes forth. Demons are cast out. Doubt is cast out. Unbelief is cast out. Suspicion is cast out. Uncertainty is cast out. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. By the Holy Spirit. Coming through the
we shall not be ever the same again in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ Father we shall never be the same you're picking in spirit you're picking in power your resurrection power Lord fall upon every heart every soul every person in the name of the Jesus Christ the conquering spirit the Holy Spirit on the ground the Holy Spirit is on the ground the Holy Spirit is on the ground church the Holy Spirit is on the ground receive we receive Lord we receive Lord we receive Lord we receive you from your hand blessing in abundance blessing 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 break through break through break through in the lives of the believer on the ground the Holy Spirit comes behind his word confirming it with signs and wonders and miracles in different breakthroughs we believe Lord I'm going to ask Brother Alan to pray hallelujah the Lord meet us at that point of need Let's just raise up our hands. Glory to God. As our brother prays, bless. Merciful Heavenly Father. Father, we stand here in agreement with your children this day. Father, there is nothing too hard for you. And Father, we take authority over every lying demon of doubt and say that you have no place in this place. And Father, uh, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we bind you and cast you out. And Father, we proclaim that the windows of heaven are open. And Father, that the blessings are falling. 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 And Father, there is breakthrough. There is healing. There is deliverance. Depression has no, no right in this place that things are changing for your glory that from this day forward Lord God testimonies will come forth Father we give you all the praise and we give you all the glory and we thank you Lord for you are an awesome God and mighty in this place Father we give you the glory 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 we give you the glory. We give you the glory. We give you the glory. All glory and honor unto the Lamb. All glory and honor. Father, we lift the power of the cross of Calvary. Our victory over every circumstance. Lord God, let faith be ignited. Lord God, like a flame. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, hallelujah. Mm -hmm.
bless you. Hallelujah. Let's just in this atmosphere, a few minutes of worship. It has been sealed. Oh God. Brethren, the Holy Spirit has just been on the grounds. As a believer, I haven't served the Lord for a long time. When the Holy Spirit comes, you know it. And I know it. Oh, there's something that just happens. Just believe. Just accept. Hallelujah. No more doubting. Oh, may the Lord strengthen our brother, brother. Alan, God richly bless you. Church, have a blessed week. God bless you. Communion service next Sunday. I know that I can stand